Does this sound familiar? You've got your hands full with some work. Maybe you're cleaning out uh, an engine and your wife is calling you from the bedroom. Babe, can you grab me a glass of wine? Or, or babe, can you grab my laptop charger? Maybe this sounds familiar. You come home from work to find that the house is clean and that there's a piping hot meal on the oven for you. Well, if either of these two situations sound like you, it could be that you're married to a person whose love language is acts of service. If you're not familiar, the love languages are a way that a person expresses and receives love. Dr. Gary Chapman wrote the book on the five love languages where he discovered five core love languages and everybody speaks one. Sometimes we might even speak two. Those love languages are words of affirmation, acts of service, quality time, physical touch, and receiving gifts. Now, it's super important that you understand your spouse's love language. When you do, you'll find that your marriage is vibrant and healthy and alive and that you're not really having a lot of arguments. I know that for me and my wife, being able to know her love language has helped us to have a more thriving and sexy marriage. See, most couples don't speak the same love language. So when you're trying to express love to your spouse, your spouse is not receiving it as love. For example, I like to have my back rubbed. It makes me feel safe and secure. And so I try to express love to my wife with a little back rub, but I find out that she doesn't really care for it too much. Similarly, my wife shows her love by acts of service. And so she'll do things for me and half the time, I don't even realize she's doing it for me. This can lead to arguments and strife in your marriage. So in this video series, I'm gonna share with you the five love languages and provide some actionable tips on how you can speak your spouse's love language that's different from yours. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about acts of service. So stay tuned, it's Thriving Sexy Marriage. Hey, and welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Owen, my wife Teresa and I are marriage coaches. We actively work with couples to help their bad marriages get good and their good marriages even better. We upload a couple videos a week to the channel, so I hope that you'll subscribe and join us for each new upload. Now, if you don't know your love language or your spouse's love language yet, then I would highly suggest you take the free love languages test. We put the link in the description box and I hope that you'll take the time to check it out. It should be a lot of fun. It only takes 15 to 20 minutes, but you and your wife will discover so much about yourselves. It's a lot of fun. Make a night out of it and uh, we put a link in the description box below. Before we get started today, I wanna remind you of a couple things. Number one, the love languages are not gender specific. A big problem that we see with couples is that one partner, typically the wife, will assume she knows the husband's love language. And maybe you're right, but maybe you're not right. We would encourage you to take that test and don't assume what your partner's love language is gonna be. Let, let the test sort of reveal that to you. Now, another part of the love languages that's very, very important to understand is that there's a, an active love language and there's a passive love language, okay? The active love language is where you're actually doing the thing, right? You're saying the words of affirmation, you're doing the words of service, and your partner feels loved, okay? But then there's the passive side where you're not doing the acts of service, you're not saying the words of affirmation, you're not gift giving or whatever the case might be, and so your partner feels unloved. Aww. And you've gotta recognize the difference there because it's not just about, you know, oh, my, my partner, my spouse feels loved when I do these things, but remember, when you're not doing those things, your partner might actually feel that you're withholding your love from them. So it's important to be active with your love language. If acts of service is your spouse's love language, then nothing speaks louder to them than engaging in some activity 
that shows dedication, sacrifice, and commitment. Maybe it's changing the baby's diapers. Maybe it's washing the car. Maybe it's doing the dishes. Maybe it's, you know, picking up the couch you know, and vacuuming underneath the couch. It might even be as simple as making the bed or cleaning up, you know, your hair shavings in, in, in the bathroom sink. You might show your spouse love with words of affirmation or even coming home with roses or, or, or gift giving, but if they're an acts of service person, nothing speaks as loud to them as the action. They're thinking, hey, if you love me, you'd pick up your boots and you'd do something around here. Jesus gave us a profound illustration of acts of service when he washed the feet of his apostles. I mean, this was a time when everyone walked on dirt roads and wore sandals and Jesus took off the sandals and washed their feet. What an illustration for how we can love on our spouses in our marriage. The act of service may not always be wonderful. It might be grimy and dirty, but it speaks volumes of love into your spouse. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing seven actionable steps that you can take to express your love to a spouse whose love language is acts of service. Now, if you hear anything specifically that resonates with you, or if you have some ideas that I didn't mention, let us know in the comment section below and be sure to read some of the other people's comments as well. We'd love to get to know you and we'd love to engage with you more deeply in the Thriving Sexy Marriage community. Tip number one, acts of service are almost always sacrificial. It's not enough to just, you know, lift your feet up while she's vacuuming or, or come home and give her a kiss on the cheek. You've got to actually commit dedicated time to fulfilling an action for your spouse. Now, I use a lot of, you know, I say, you know, for your wife or the husband might, but keep in mind, this is just because the way I speak, these are not gender specific in any way, shape, or form. Now, my wife's love language is acts of service, and I discovered this accidentally one Saturday morning where I went to go wash her car. I, I would say that we were still newlyweds at this point. We were still in our very first apartment, and she had this old, you know, this gray sedan, and it was, it was kind of a cool, but like economical car. Yeah, it's very, very my wife. She's cool, but economical, you know? Uh, and the car was was filthy banana pills and 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 goldfish crackers and raisins and me I'm like a clean car guy so I was disgusted by this car and I actually went out there mumbling and grumbling and you know, like ah oh, stupid car didn't take any responsibility for this car it's not how you treat a motor vehicle you know that kind of thing and I'm scrubbing the car and I'm washing it and I'm listening to Hill Song and I'm just out there all morning. Yeah, eventually my bad attitude went away and it became a joy to do this thing for my wife. And I called her out and I said, hey, come out here. I want to show you what I've been doing all day. And I showed her this sparkling brand new car. She immediately burst into tears. And she just gives me this big hug. And, and, and that is when, I mean, I, I, was not, I was expecting like, oh, babe, thanks. But she just, I mean, for days, folks, for days. And some of this translated into the bedroom, if you know what I'm saying. Whoa. I had no idea that my wife would be so motivated by this simple act of service towards her. All I did was wash the car, but to her, it was like slaying the dragon. Number two, for an acts of service person, the absence of service is like the absence of air. They simply will not feel your love for them. All the love letters, all the roses, all the gifts in the world won't make up for the actual sacrificial act of service, okay? Now, you can't try to transfer over your everyday chores as an act of service either. You know, I know that in the past, I've tried to get away with, I work every day for this family. That's my act of service, you know? Or, or you know, I, I go and I make sure that your car is, is filled with gasoline. These are part of my duties, right? As a husband, it's part of my role here in the house. Your expression of love is the act of service. You can't replace it with something else. Number three, acts of service are joyful, okay? You can't decide to go clean the trash cans for your wife and then mumble and grumble about it the whole time. You know, the same is true if, if you're gonna serve your husband. If you're gonna go clean up your husband's office as an act of service towards him, you know, you can't come in and bark about his organizational skills afterwards, right? The whole thing is about being joyful and expressing your love, right? You're doing this thing, you know, out of love for them. 
and kicking trash cans or banging walls while you're doing it, clanging dishes, you know, it, it just eliminates the joyful part of the act of service. You know, if you're out there cleaning trash cans for your wife and you got your hands in the muck, you know, and she comes out there and she says, babe, what are you doing? You know, you don't respond with, well, you kids make a mess and I'm gonna clean out these trash cans because I'm a noble guy, right? To the contrary, you wanna say something chivalrous and humble like, you know, no wife of mine is gonna have dirty trash cans and that's final, you know? You wanna make it appear as if you're enjoying the act of service that is sacrificial and non-replaceable and sometimes that's a hard thing to do but I think you can do it. Number four, you can't outsource your acts of service. And I struggle with this as an entrepreneur because my whole goal is to outsource everything, right? My whole goal is to get the business running on its own so I can step out and do other things. And I sort of discovered this accidentally um, when my wife was away for the day and I decided to bring in a house cleaning service to clean the whole house for her, right? So I thought my wife is gonna love this. I'm gonna clean the whole house for her. I wonder who I should call to do it, right? So I called a friend of ours from church and I had her mom, her mom has a house cleaning service. Her mom came in, scrubbed the house top to bottom. It sparkled, it shined, it smelled like lemon scented bleach. It was awesome. My wife comes home and it was just like perfect. You know, she was so in love and she said, oh my gosh, how long did this take you? And I think I said something like, well, it only took the crew a couple of hours and, and they had it all done in time. And then she looked at me, just kind of her face just sunk and she's like, oh, you had someone else do this. And it wasn't like she was unhappy, right? She heard me rehearsing this and she's like, hey, I wasn't unhappy that you cleaned the house. So I wanna make that very clear. She wasn't unhappy. But it's almost like a knight outsourcing the slaying of the dragon. Like rather than slaying the dragon himself, he hired someone else to do it and then came to claim the princess, right? You can't outsource the acts of service. You gotta do it. Tip number five is acts of service don't have to be a surprise. This one burdened me for a long time because I'm like a surprise person. I, it's just something I, I just, part of my nature, I always wanna surprise the kids. I always wanna surprise my wife. And, and so it was kinda like, well, it's, I gotta wait till she's gone. I, I put all these restrictions on when I can actually show my affection and my love for her. What I learned was is communicating to my wife helps me to understand which acts of service might best suit her at this time. So when I'm out and about, I'm in the habit now of just texting her, hey, I'm out and about, is there anything I can get for you? And almost always, she'll hit me with a laundry list of things that again, I don't really wanna do, right? I don't really wanna go to the DMV, I don't really wanna go to the post office, but I do wanna love my wife. And if, if she feels loved by me going to the store at six o'clock at night and grabbing all these items that we don't need for three weeks, then that's fine, I'm happy to do it. Number six, acts of service don't have to be like astronomical groundbreaking events. You know, I talked about, you know, cleaning the entire car. I talked about, you know, cleaning the entire house. I've talked about slaying the dragon. And these are, these are big time things. But you know, that can really be a bottleneck to accomplishing some major acts of service for your wife. In fact, the acts of service can be the little things, the little things like making the bed in the morning, like grabbing her a cup of coffee in the morning. Of course, it can mean grabbing him that cup of coffee in the morning as well. I even clean up my hair shavings around the sink, which I haven't always been in, in the habit of, but you know, it shows her that I love her, that I respect her space, and I want her to you know, enjoy um, living with me. And, and so the little things matter a lot. Look for little ways to love on your spouse. Maybe it's as simple as like putting your shoes away. Maybe it's as simple as emptying the dishwasher. It doesn't have to be monumental. It can be something tiny and every day that I'm sure they'll appreciate. And finally, service matters most in times of need. This is super important to understand. When your spouse, if your spouse is an acts of service person and they're in a time of need, a flat tire, uh, maybe they're at, maybe they ran out of gas again and you're so frustrated by this, I can't believe this happened again, or you know, you forgot your gym bag again, you forgot your lunch again, and they call you up and they say, hey, I, you know, I forgot my lunch, can you bring my lunch to me? Those are the moments that matters. An acts of service person expects you to engage with them because they expect you to love them. So in these moments of need, I wanna urge you not to lecture and not to sort of 
uh, chastise, but instead to accept and to joyfully and sacrificially say, let me come pick you up or let me call an Uber for you, right? Or let me uh, stop what I'm doing here and I'll come and I'll bring you your lunch. Look for opportunities to serve your spouse that is an acts of service person. Now we covered seven of these today and we've listed them all on our blog. We've put a link to that blog in the description box. I would urge you, go down there, copy these seven notes here and put them in your Apple notes on your phone or on your, your mobile device so that in a moment where you wanna express love to your spouse, you can pull out your phone and you go, okay, I can do something sacrificial, I can be joyful and, and I'll look for something small to do, right? And you just remind yourself to, to show love to your spouse uh, in that way. So check the description box for a few links in there. You can check some stuff out. And remember, acts of service is not the only love language and it's not the most important love language. They're all of equal importance and there's five of them. That's why we've made an entire video series that goes through all five and each video provides some actionable steps so that you can show your spouse love in a way that they'll accept in their own love language, especially since it's most likely different from yours. So click on the link above here and uh, check those videos out. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other content we have over here. We talk about sex, we talk about parenting, we talk about conflict resolution. We even talk about some time management and, and uh, team building stuff that you can do with your family. And I hope that you'll become a part of the thriving sexy marriage community where we severely want to impact marriages and make a huge, huge difference in our country today. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe and we'll see you next time.